A few words about legal issues. First, every country and region has unique labor laws. So you need to know what yours are and just always consult a qualified labor lawyer for legal advice. I'm not a labor lawyer, so I can't give you legal advice. Plus, even if I was a labor lawyer, labor law is different in every country and in every region of that country. So you just need to know what laws pertain to you and a lawyer can help you with that. In general, the hard stuff is easy though, and the soft stuff is hard. So by the hard stuff, I mean, complying with the law is, is pretty easy because it's very straightforward. You know exactly what you need to do. It's the soft stuff that's hard. It's handling the relationships, handling that firing interview, choosing who should be coached and who should be fired. Those are the hard things. Complying with the legal requirements of the law are relatively easy. You just need to know what those requirements are. So use a lawyer for that part. Firing with cause and without cause. And again, by this, I mean, uh, when I say without cause, I don't mean like there was no reason to fire, but I mean legal cause. Do you have legal cause or do you not have legal cause to fire? And again, every region and country regards cause differently. So you just need to consult a lawyer or your HR department before attempting to fire with cause because depending where, where you live, that can be very, very sticky. In the region that I live, it's almost impossible to fire with cause. And that may be different for you depending on what country you live in and what region of the country you live in. So again, consult a labor lawyer uh, before attempting to fire with cause. If you were to fire an employee, and they went to a labor lawyer and they lawyered up and they looked at representing that person, here are some factors that the law may take into account. First, the age of the employee. So if the employee is considered older and disadvantaged because of their age, that could be a factor. Length of service. The longer, the more of a factor it is, of course. The level of responsibility. Were they entry level? Were they at a management level, a senior management level? That counts. The amount of notice given possible discriminatory action. So if that employee believes or can convince a, a, a lawyer or a judge that they were fired due to discriminatory actions, that can count too. Whether or not the employee was induced to join the company. So if you took them away from a great job where, that was secure, that can matter as well. And availability of similar employment given the employee's age, training, experience, and qualifications. Here are some legal basics. You must give a reasonable notice period. You must give compensation already earned, and that may look like vacation pay, or share or bonus-based compensation, or vacation not taken, things that are actually owed to the employee. You must give appropriate severance or working notice. You must give anything promised in your employment agreement. So if you have a written employment agreement, you have to own up to what you promised. 